Hello and welcome to today's episode of So What's the Catch here on the So What's the Catch Facebook page or if you're watching this later on YouTube channel or if you're listening to this on Anchor, we appreciate you tuning in however you're following us. We'll go with that. What's up, guys? Good to be here. How's yeah. it going? So, it's, going. it's a Friday, so this is different for us. Uh, for everybody that joins, we appreciate you listening in on Friday. Yes. Um, we had some stuff come up on Wednesday, so we moved the show to Friday, but here we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I don't – you know how they, this period of time is supposed to be called the NFL off season. I don't think the NFL knows the meaning of the word off season because the off switch seems to have been like completely busted. Well, it's a crazy NFL off season. Um, it's the league that never sleeps. I know you said that uh, before, Josh. Um, but yeah, it's been very, very exciting, more so than most off seasons. Um, but yeah, it's the NFL. You know, it's always going to dominate the headlines, whether it's the middle of the year. You know in the off season. So yeah, um, there's plenty to talk about in terms of NFL news and rumors and whatnot. So we got a lot to get to. Yeah. So I thought it would be fun if we did like a mock, I guess like a draft style where it's like, (laughs) let me see if I can explain this. I saw this on NFL network, so I'm stealing their idea a little bit. Whatever. Just roll with me. It'll go Brian first, James second, I'll go third and you select like what you think is the most impactful move of the off season. And we can do like top eight. Is that top 10, top eight, something like that? Well, there's three of us. So how about something divisible by three? Um, Top nine. Nine. We all pick three. Okay. Is that fine? We all pick three. Yeah. (laughs) So we're going to go. Who's starting? Sorry, I'm just going to set this show sheet on fire and throw it out the window because apparently we're just... <laughs> okay, I guess we'll just do we'll do this exercise real quick, then we'll discuss the topics. Okay. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> Does someone lead the way? I'm a little confused. Okay. It's a snake-style draft, so it'll go okay. whoever has the first pick will get the last pick on the... On okay, the we start off. first, though. All right, I'll go first. I am going to say... How about the Chargers getting Khalil Mack and J.C. Jackson? Okay. Uh, who's second? How about you go second? Okay, this is easy. Deshaun Watson. Mm, you stole mine, James. Uh, okay, I'm going to go Russell Wilson. Did All right. Again? I will go Tyreek Hill to the Dolphins. So Tom not- Brady. Ooh, Tom Brady. So free agency counts too, not just trades. Correct. Yes. Oh, Aaron Rodgers, staying in Green Bay. On that note, Devontae Adams going to the Raiders. That's a good one. That is a good one. Um hmm. <laughs> trying to pick one here. Um there's a couple I don't like. That's where I think you're having trouble too. Yeah. Yeah. Man, let's just say, um, how about this? We can throw in not re signing a guy, too. Uh, okay, so that, okay, about people that are available that haven't been re signed. Oh, uh, the, the Seahawks cutting Bobby Wagner, boom. Oh, boom. okay, Dang. yeah, that's that's a good one, yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to go the other direction. And can I t- choose a bad one? Can sure. I, yeah. Can I sell one? I'm selling uh, MVS to Kansas City. Mm, okay. Interesting. Yep. So let's start at the top here. Devontae Adams, he was traded from Green Bay to the Raiders. Derek Carr has a new target to throw to. Uh, quite a good one, too. Devontae Adams is a stud they paid him a fuck ton of money because that's what you do with Devontae Adams. This is a huge move for Vegas. Yeah. Best receiver in the NFL? Yes. Yeah, probably. I'd say yeah. probably. And the stupid part is Green Bay only got two first draft or two draft picks in return for Devontae. 
And then Kansas City turns around, trades Tyreek Hill to the Dolphins, and they get five draft picks in return. What the hell? Yeah, it's incredible how much capital that teams are willing to move on wide receivers. You know, it kind of shows the direction that the league is headed, you know. Mm -hmm. And you're right. You know, Devontae Adams got a fuck ton of money because he deserves it. You know, that's mm -hmm. what that's what you do. And teams that are on the verge, that are on the bubble, um, I would say Las Vegas is considered one of those teams. Um, this is the kind of move that you make if you're trying to make a serious run at a Super Bowl. So Good for Vegas. I think they're really headed in the right direction. I really like that combo. Um, I think that he's going to bring the best out of Derek Carr. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it's going to be interesting. I think a lot of people think that a lot of Devontae's numbers are attributed to having Aaron Rodgers be his quarterback. But um, I'm not saying Derek Carr is a significant – well, yeah, I am. Derek Carr is a significant drop from Rodgers, but he's still a good, he's still a good quarterback. But my point being, it's going to be interesting to compare his numbers this season – uh, with how he did in Green Bay, you know, having Derek Carr throwing him the ball as opposed to Aaron Rodgers. And look there who's we here, Mr. Berserk. How's it going, y'all? Yeah. What's up, dude? I didn't think you were coming. Uh, I'll, man, I'll do my best not to miss a show. I'm sorry. My bad for being late, but uh, was uh, were you guys just talking about Deshaun? No, we haven't got there yet. We haven't got there yet. We're talking about uh, Devontae Adams getting traded to the Raiders. Yes. I, think I know for him. teammates at Fresno State, that, and they became pretty good friends, actually. So, Yeah, I don't know if I buy this that they're best friends narrative that they're trying to sell. I think that obviously like that's what you're going to try to sell when it's a quarterback-wide yeah. receiver combo. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm sure they get along, and the, I'm more excited about the fact that they're familiar with each other, that they've thrown – routes together you know that yeah. that excites me more than this like supposed brotherhood than the two of them have that yeah i don't know if that really exists or not yeah, yeah. And, and let's they, thought, they take they take the narrative of they just hung out as brothers mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i get that and I, let's look at the, the raiders the weapons now because they, they have uh Devontae adams they signed uh demarcus robinson from the Chiefs, so they took a weapon away from patrick mahomes gave it to Derek carr they still have hunter renfro they still have Brian Edwards. They still have Darren Waller. I mean, the, Josh, I mean, don't forget Josh Jacobs. And Josh Jacobs is a running back, and he's really good. I mean, you, yeah. you know, this offense, they got a lot of guys. I mean, they're they got to be taken seriously. I think. I mean, one hundred. Sure, their defense needs some work. You know, Max Crosby signing him to an extension that was a good move. Um, yeah. Signing uh, Chandler Jones, I believe that they got right. Oh yeah, we should. Why no? One of us should have. One of us should have yeah. definitely. I definitely forgot really about Chandler Jones, but they got Chandler Jones, and he's he's more than solid. I mean, he's they're, great. <laughs> they're yeah. in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. I, him and Crosby. I mean, that's scary. Yeah, honestly, I know we'll talk more about the Tyree Kill situation trade and all that in a minute, but. Mm -hmm. Losing Demarcus Robinson and Tyreek, I don't know what this Kansas City offense is going to look like. Well, I can tell you right now that they're going to be drafting a wide receiver in the first round with one of the you know draft picks they just got. Okay, let's be real here. And Garrett Wilson is going to be catching bombs from Patrick Mahomes. Okay, yeah. and Garrett Wilson's also going to be a hell of a lot cheaper. Uh, and that's something that they got to worry about with the contract they gave Patrick Mahomes and the contract that uh, they gave Travis Kelsey. I mean, I, he's still got Travis Kelsey. I as soon as I heard about this Tyree Kill move, my brain immediately went, oh, they're going to get Garrett Wilson in the draft. Like, you that, don't think they're going to get Chris Olave? No, I, I think that Garrett Wilson is more of a Tyree Kill style player. Like, it, it's almost like a. Like James just said, he's a cheaper version, really. I mean, it's a similar style wide receiver. Um, there's some critiques about his game, but, I mean, you're going to have that being a young receiver coming into the draft. Um, I, but I, I like him better than Olave for the Chiefs. I think, I think Olave with other teams better than Wilson, but in this instance, I immediately thought, oh, okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense. You know, yeah. get a bunch of draft capital for him and, you know, draft Garrett Wilson and boom. You know, you have a younger version of Tyreek Hill. So – I mean, if uh, I personally think Patrick Mahomes could make like nobody's into something, I think he's that good. Like, yeah, I really don't think it, I don't think it matters if he has a star wide receiver or not at this point. I think he really is that good. 
and uh, they would have to trade up to get Garrett Wilson because their picks are 29 and 30. But um, if they just stay put, they're not able to, to trade up, they could easily go Chris Olave, Traylon Burks at 29 and 30 back to back. And oh, I thought they had a top 15 pick in the first round. Though. No, it's 29 and 30. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Um, so it would have to be a trade up, which yeah. I mean, it's, it's the chiefs. It's Andy Reid, definitely in the realm of possibilities, but it, that's how they it, got Mahomes. I mean, yeah. I mean, they could honestly probably go a lot of and Burks at 29 and 30. And that would be absolutely frightening to everybody. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or uh, they could get Drake London. Drake London would be another guy that, you know, that's a possibility for them, but. Solid, Chris solid. Uh, no, they don't have a, a draft have a first round draft. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. We traded him. Too. Yeah, it, I guess we're gonna get to the MVS move. Um, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but yeah, I mean, look at the production. It, we'll get to that, I guess. I'll, I'll get to the MVS in Kansas City thing. I don't yeah, want to so Let's look at Tyree Kill. Tyree Kill's now in Miami. If we're talking ultimate downgrade from quarterback to uh, from situation to situation, it's going from Mahomes to Noodle Arm to a okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is just it sucks for Tyreek Hill, but like he's gonna have to do all of his production on short routes and like bubble screens because he's not gonna catch anything down the field. Yeah, yeah. So he can't do those deep passes. Yeah, we talked about this yesterday, Josh. Uh, and that was the same thing I said was that. You know, Tyreek Hill produced crazy numbers at Kansas City, but part of that's because he had a guy that could get the ball down the field to him. Like, Tua mm-hmm. is not going to be able to get – like, Tyreek Hill is too fast for Tua's weak arm, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. He's um, he's too quick for Tua. Like, he just doesn't have the arm strength flat out. Mm-hmm. Um, Tua is very accurate, and I know that they'll be able to do some good things with him, but, I mean, 111 catches for 1,200 yards last year, he's not – going to be able I mean, to get that kind of production with Tua. That, in that case, he could just throw a bunch of checkdowns. I mean, he can get a lot of check down, a lot of yards after catch, but let's be real here. Uh, if there's one trait that always, always declines with age, it's speed. Okay? Yeah. And so if we look at, at Hill, we look at his age, we look at where his career trajectory mm-hmm. is going, they'll get a couple good years out of Tyreek Hill and then – you know, it's gonna it's gonna go down. It will It'll go downhill, but he's not gonna he's not gonna crater. At least I don't think so. But uh, here's the other thing, though: they're gonna be asking him to run a lot of things over the middle, a lot mm-hmm. of schemes, a lot of stuff, and and that's he's gonna face some hits that he's not used to taking. You know what I mean? Yeah. And James, you nailed it. Speed is the number one thing that goes with age. The other thing is durability. Yeah. Um, you know, and that that's something that really concerns me is that. Yeah, he's got the perfect skill set to run routes like that, but you're putting him in a lot of danger doing that, as opposed to Patrick Mahomes, where it's uh, it's like the meme, you know, I, I'll just throw it as far as I can. Tyree kills down there somewhere; he'll catch it. You know, yeah. uh, that that's a very real concept, though, in their offense. Was like if the play breaks down, I know I got the fastest guy in the field; he'll be down there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Tua can't get the ball that far down the field, so they're not going to have that luxury. Right, but. The, all the pressure is on Tua now because think about what Miami has done in the offseason. They shored up their offensive line by getting uh, Teron Armstead and Connor Williams. They went out and signed Cedric Williams or Cedric Wilson. I'm sorry. They got, they got an absolute space cadet for a head coach. <laughs> yeah. They got Tyreek Hill. They have Mike Gesicki, who I would say is a top five tight end. They. They got um, – who are the two running backs they signed? Chase Edmonds, I think, mm. if I'm remembering correctly. And then Mostert from San Francisco. So Tua has everything he needs to be a good quarterback. It's all on him now. He just yeah. needs to do it. I mean, he hasn't really done it yet. Sure, like he's looked okay, but like okay is where the Browns found themselves not too long ago. Uh, okay, is where a lot of teams were like, you know, this is good enough. We can win like this. That's how the Jaguars end up signing Blake Bortles that extension and their team exploding. Okay. Wow, That's how that. the, the Eagles got to where they are now currently, and they're trying to make Jalen Hurts be a thing, and he's probably just okay as well. Uh, you know, you see teams settle for okay, and you settle for irrelevance when you do that. 
this this feels so much like the Brown squad going into last season. This, yeah. Dolphin, this Dolphin squad. They, <laughs> they are they are quarterback play away from being a, a good team, you know. So it, it's do they think that Tua has a high enough ceiling that they can get them to that point? And I, I personally haven't seen it from them yet. Um, so I, I don't know. We'll see. He's good. Think, like you said, Josh, he has no excuses now. Yeah. I think Tua's ceiling, if I were to give a good prediction, is he's going to be like a good quarterback, not make it past the second round of the playoffs. That would be my expectation. Probably. Uh, and he's, a, he's a guy that once you sign him to an extension – your window is closed. Okay. That, that's what he is. You're not doing Mariota a bit like that yeah. level. Like he's, he's, he's very he's much that. A, yeah. A very, a very decent backup quarterback. Um, a guy that does a lot of things very well. Um, by, by all means, he's, you know, never been reported to be anything other than a good leader and a good guy. Why, why do these guys just keep getting drafted high then? Because teams are quarterback needy. And they're, they're, most they're, important they're, position they're desperate for quarterbacks is what right. it is. You see someone, you see him, you know, win. You know, teams want to want a winner. You see yeah. him put up certain numbers. They're they're more willing to gloss over anything negative if they see anything positive. And so that's yeah. what it always is. I, I've said it before, and, it's, and I say it again: when you're evaluating players, don't put together a list of positives because you'll talk yourself into anyone. Yep. Put together yeah. a list of negatives. Tell me what he can't do. You will learn more about the player when you compile a list of negatives than you do a list of positives. That's actually a, a fair point that I didn't yeah. even think about, but it totally makes sense. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, the numbers never lie, but the, you can manipulate numbers to tell any story you want to. And, yeah, and, I've gotten into Twitter arguments with uh, this one asshole who's trying to tell me Richard Higgins is like the most uh, efficient wide receiver in the league. I'm like, get the <laughs> hell out of here. <laughs> Anyone can manipulate numbers to, to do anything, like you said. Yeah. I mean, yeah, okay. confirmation bias is a real thing, especially when you're talking about fandom and things like mm-hmm. that. So, like, when when you do what James suggested and you look at the negatives, you know, you're removing that bias from it. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, it's more effective, and when it comes to Tua, there's a lot of stuff that he can't do that we know from yes. jump. So right, if my quarterback and, had a touchdown to interception ratio that was bad, but they still won games, I still I would I would take that quarterback. You would yeah, take that quarterback if he's winning us games and getting the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, I mean I, yeah, if he's winning a Super Bowl, of course. I mean, sure, but you know. Uh, I'm like, winning a Super like, Bowl, but like at some point you have to look at the quarterback like how much is this guy holding us back yeah you know what i mean because that's literally what we had here in cleveland this past year is how much is this guy holding us back and right look at the competition he has too you know in the afc right now it's like it's ridiculous it's a buzzsaw of the league so you know he's got a lot of guys in front of him and you have to ask yourself the question okay if this team makes the postseason is Tua going to outplay Josh Allen? Is Tua going to outplay, you know, Pat Mahomes? No, Russ he's Wilson. not going. Yeah, Russ Wilson. No, but he's not going to any of those guys. Um, so, yeah, I, to me, this is kind of like – it's almost like a waste of a year for them. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the one thing this does do, I will say that it, it should give them an answer either way on Tua. If Tua's if – if he doesn't move the needle all that much, it's like, okay, he's definitely not the guy – if he finally shows us something that he hasn't done yet, then you know what? Maybe they continue investing, continue going with Tua. But if he just looks like crap, that even that helps them even more. You know right. what I mean? You want a definitive answer either way. You want him to be awesome or be terrible. I mean, yeah. we, we what know the that. What have decided to do is just to fuck around and find out, basically. Right. And <laughs> that's what's going to happen this year. They're, they're going to fuck around, start Tua, and they're going to find out if he's the guy or not. And mm-hmm. you get some clarity out of that, but when you have so many weapons around you, it's like, you it's know. Disguising their flaws at that point. Mm-hmm. I mean, we do know that at one point, or I guess several points, the Dolphins – seem to be interested in Deshaun Watson before those talks fizzled out. So that should a lot of that was prompted by Brian Flores. Okay. Yeah. Uh, once Flores was taken out of the equation, once ownership stepped in and the the GM said that like we don't want to do that, like two hours our guy, it it was it pretty much just like ended it ended that. It was pretty much just Tua was interested in Brian Flores. Uh, and or right. not Tua, Watson was. 
Uh, but once Brian Flores wasn't the coach, he, he Watson wasn't interested in Miami. Yeah, yeah, that was. I thought that still was a bad move to fire him. I mean, yeah, but th- that was never going to work. What was going on there? It, it, it's okay to have disagreements with with front office and coach because that way you're at least having conversations and makes gives you a different perspective of the way someone evaluates a player. But when it's complete, just not functional. Yeah, it, that's completely. Good, it's going to ruin a, a franchise, and that's what they were. They were not functional. No. Yeah. They were extremely dysfunctional, and according to reports, the owner wanted that, wanted Flores to lose intentionally to improve, improve their draft stock or draft pick, I should say. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about that before, but back to back to this, Brian. You've been waiting to talk about this Marquez Valdez Scantling to the Chiefs. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I just wanted to start with the. Uh, how we ended the the conversation with Tyree kill. You know, I I repeated his numbers. It was 111 catches, nine TDs for 1200 yards last year. And the year before it was 87 catches for 15 TDs and 1200 yards again. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the same numbers for MVS last year, uh, 26 catches, three TDs and 430 yards. Uh, Mm -hmm. Granted there were some injuries and he was out some time, what have you. Uh, but the year before, 33 catches, six TDs, uh, 690 yards. Yeah. So these aren't numbers that uh, this isn't this isn't replacing Tyree Kill. Like the, I'm not saying it's not a good move. I'm not saying it's not a good piece for them. But it it just it doesn't do a whole lot for me is what I'm saying. He's a yeah, good piece. He, he adds depth to that unit, but um, they need more work. Is is what yeah. I'm. I'm with you there. He's probably more of a replacement for Demarcus Robinson being gone than for Tyree Kill, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yes, so comparing Robinson's numbers with Valdez Scantlings, they're pretty – they're similar. Right. I just – there a lot of people in K, like KC were just going crazy about this move, and I'm like, let's pump the brakes a little bit. You know, he's he's never really produced all that much yet. So I mean, they, what they probably saw is that he led the, the league in yards per reception in 2020 with 20.9 yards per catch. And everyone got excited, like, oh, he's going to catch so many bombs from Mahomes. It's just like, let's calm down. Yeah. yeah. I want to look at this more from the Green Bay perspective because they lost Javante Adams. They've lost Valdez Scantling. I believe they lost another receiver to the Chicago Bears, too. So who the heck is Aaron Rodgers going to throw to this season? All right, you ready? I got their depth chart pulled up. Uh, Juwan Winfrey. Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, Malik Taylor, Rico Gafford, Amari Rogers, Chris Blair. Those are your Packers tight ends or wide receivers. Wow. Tight ends, uh, Robert Tanyan, uh, Mercedes Lewis, because he's still in the league somehow at a million years old. Incredible. Uh, Josiah DeGuara, Tyler Davis, Dominique Daphne, and Elise Mack. I've heard of two of those people. Same. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Uh, at, at the receivers, I've heard of three of them. So, like, they're, they're going to have work to do. Yeah, I mean, Lazard did some nice things last year, but, like, he's not a, a number one receiver. Like, these guys kind of stink. Yeah. To put uh, it like lucky, lucky for the Packers, they got picks 22 and 28 in the first round. They also got 53 and 59 in round two. I imagine yeah. two of those picks are wide receivers. Oh, I would think so, too. I would think so. They've got to. It's going to have to be. I mean, we're, we're, we're bordering on, like, that one year in New England where uh, it was, like, Julian Edelman and, um, like, there was no over-the-top guys. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? It was just all, like, short yardage guys. It was, like, Julian Edelman, Kenny Britt, and I think another guy that was on that team. It just, like, this is such a horrible group of yeah. wide receivers. and. Green Bay made some questionable decisions, though, when it comes to the draft, you know, so they, they might. Hi, hey, Jordan Love. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so who knows, you know, I, I don't really remember them throwing first round picks at skill players, you know, in a while. So it'll be interesting. Sorry, I had a cough in my throat. Eddie Lacy yeah. might be the last one. Sounds familiar. That might be the last time they spent on a. On a on a skill position player in the first round. Yeah, crazy. 
Let me pull this up real quick because I I can pull up their all time draft history. Their last time they drafted a first round skill position player. Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, that immediately is what I thought. As soon as you said they'll take the two wide receivers, I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> they don't do that typically. No. They, I mean, they took the running back. Eddie Lacy was a second rounder. Yeah. Oh, Jordan. No, Jordan Nelson was a second rounder. Uh, AJ so, Dillon okay. was a second rounder, I think. Okay, here we go. Last time they drafted a skill position player in round one, 2002, Javon Walker. 20 years. Wow. Damn. 20 years. He was been long. I didn't a couple was quarterbacks long. and a lot of defense. Wow. In the first round. Wow. So, yeah, that was my point was, yeah, yeah, it sounds like they should, but who knows? And trends got to change eventually. That's all I'll say. <laughs> That's the other thing about trends and statistics. And uh, take it from somebody who likes to, to bet on games, you know, like some people live and die by trends. And you got to remember that every streak gets broken eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, I'm one of the people that kind of looks at streaks and I, I kind of go, well, they're due, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they're due. That's the they're due. Yeah. I mean, Michigan's streak was bound to end at some point against Ohio State. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Fair. That's fair. It had to eventually. Yeah. So while it didn't seem like it would for quite some time, it had to eventually. Uh speaking of Kansas City, uh the 2023 NFL draft will be taking place in Kansas City. Good for Kansas City. It seems like a good host city. Mm-hmm. You'll, it's going to be nothing but people talking about uh, barbecue like the entire week. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Everything's going to be about barbecue. It's going to be nonstop tweets and stories and shows about we're in the Kansas City for the draft. We have to go to this barbecue place. Exactly. They claim to have the best barbecue. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, Kansas City and that. Memphis both talk about that all the time. And Texas, too. Mm. <laughs> I love that the NFL draft is on the road now and they're not doing it at Radio City Music Hall anymore. Yeah, it was nice having it here in Cleveland. Um, uh, interesting. They had a different time. Yeah. I, I don't care where they have it because I'm never going to go because, like, it's not something that I would enjoy is to sit uh, there. Grueling. It would just be, like, going to the airport, like, just yeah. waiting for something, you know, Basically. then it finally happens. And then... Yeah. It's just it's not for me. Like I'm fine with watching on TV because I can I can sit with my phone or my computer, scroll through Twitter. Yep. I want to have some beverages. I can just go and grab them from my fridge. Don't gotta pay twelve dollars for a Bud Light. Yeah. yeah, I was I was at the draft for the first three picks. I mean, See, that's what I would do if I was gonna go stay for a couple picks. Stay till my team makes their first round pick and then get the hell out of there. Yeah, but that's not is something that is so. It, it's so much more enjoyable to watch with your devices in front of you, you know? Yeah. I did want to stay for like the entire first round, but my dad and I had a flight to catch the next day and my sister and her boyfriend didn't want to stay out that late. So I, mean, I think, I think we're all in agreement. We wouldn't stay for that whole draft unless we were paid to. Yeah. Yeah. It, the draft is long and they milk it for every penny, you know? They, yeah, they do. It's a big sponsorship event now, you know. So yeah. you gotta remember that it's going to be a long, drawn-out process. And you know, with it being in Vegas this season, they're going to make it a show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's funny when when you watch like shows on YouTube and stuff that do the draft, and then they realize like what they got themselves into when they're like four and a half hours in, and they're on pick thirteen still in the first round. Yes, uh, it's yeah. hilarious. I remember uh, Pat McAfee show did it last year, and they went live at like seven thirty when Kings of Leon were still on stage, and they weren't off the air till like one something in the morning. It was ridiculous. Yeah, so don't expect us to do some. No, we, we are not covering the entire first round. No way. Especially, <laughs> especially since the Browns no longer have a first pick. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, they don't have their pick. And speaking of not having their pick anymore, it's because it is in Houston with Deshaun Watson, who the Browns did introduce today um, mm. with a press conference with Andrew Berry and Kevin Stefanski. The Haslam's will be doing their own media availability through a Zoom call later today. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. That would be watched it's really hard. hard during that press conference. press conference. What was that, Trick? No, I said people are going to watch really, really hard on like his body language and everything throughout that press conference because of all. It stuff it's over doing. now. Yeah, it already happened. Um, they, they introduced him today already, and um, it, interesting, I guess, perception of the press conference. Uh, a lot of the people that cover the team locally appear to have said that it was successful. Where a lot of the national people seem to be bashing it, which uh, I mean, that's just what it is, and that's right. what I expected, anyways. Yeah, um, He's a yeah, this is a situation that no matter how you handle it, it's going to get bad press because it's mm-hmm. it's a shitty it's a- situation. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I mean, what what did you really expect to learn? You know, you he can't say much while there's still you know all of these civil cases pending and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, he said a lot of what we expected him to say, that he's going to be a, a good teammate and a good leader and represent the city well and do a lot of good for the city and blah, blah, blah. So Yeah, I mean, that's what everyone's going to say. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I did notice he said some uh, very um, definitive statements during this. Yeah, um, the one that struck me the most was that I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. Um, I saw that... Another one, Reese, uh, he pretty much said, like, I, I'm innocent, mm-hmm. which if you're, I'm not going to, like, be legal person here because that's not what I am. I'm not a legal expert, but it's quite a statement to put out there in, in public Yeah, you have these civil suits going against you. I mean, if those are cleared and, like, let's say they don't find any inch of, like, guilt, then maybe – but I don't think that that's the only way I could see myself uh, actually like, uh, I don't know, like that actually being like, he's not guilty. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing is too, in a lot of cases like this, like they're quick to settle because they just want to get it over with, but he seems to like stubbornly be standing by this idea that he's not settling because that's an admission of guilt. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting. It's a very bold stance to take so that's why i'm saying this now yeah i mean two it, it, no guilt them, you know they, i, I would clear them at my book yeah so, i don't know time will tell i mean he was in that second court case he wasn't indicted or yeah he's not going to face criminal charges now that's right that's done. yeah so you know it is what it is. It's a weird situation. We talked about this the day after the trade on a special episode, but some people are going to denounce their fan base to this team. Others are, you know, going to ignore the allegations and stuff and just be like, give me a winner. You're a winner. We saw what you did at Clemson. Like, do that here. Simple as that. Yeah, I don't know. I just want to – I kind of want to see how these kind of cases go throughout time. I mean, you might not know how those cases go ever, to be honest with you, because they're civil. No, they're not right. criminal. So right. it, it could be settled for undisclosed amount, and you won't learn a, another piece of information about it. Right. That's just the way it is. Uh, but the Browns do have another quarterback that they're trying to unload now. It's Baker Mayfield. Apparently, nobody wants him. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nobody wants Who Baker. Who could have saw this coming, James? I'm – I'm, I can't say I'm not surprised, but uh, it is. Okay, I'll say I'm not surprised. It, yeah. it, the the phrasing team. used between the, the Panthers and Baker with mutual disinterest, I've never saw that before. That was just like. That was he got fired, and that was like when you get fired, but you quit before they could fire you. That's yeah. what, that's what yeah. that was. Like, <laughs> he found out they didn't want him, and it was, oh, well, I don't want you guys anyway. I didn't want you anyway. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's no way he's going to be on the roster for the Browns this season. That would be such an awkward situation. Well, yeah. they really can't because of his cap hit. They mm-hmm. have to move that contract one way or the other because if they don't, it's going to really limit them on what they're able to do for the rest of free agency and signing draft picks. And we don't need them. We got Jacoby Brissett. We have a backup. Get rid- just If they have to cut them, cut them. I don't you think he wants to leave. You don't think he wants to leave? 
He demanded. I know he trade. wants to leave. I'm just making that as a joke. He demanded a trade. I mean, yeah. and, and nobody I wants him. Let's, let's, let's be real here. Like, look at all these other teams that could have acquired Baker Mayfield. Okay, the Colts, the Seahawks, the Broncos. The Bucks were interested for a minute. The Panthers said no. The Texans wanted no part of him in the Sean Watson trade. Yep. Nobody wants this guy. I mean, that's the other leagues soon, want him now. When he okay. demanded a trade, my immediate reaction on this show was just, you know, be who you can afford to be. Like this. Mm-hmm. Is yeah, you said that. Yeah, be who you can afford to be. This is a mistake. You're demanding a trade, and you're not realizing that you don't have any kind of value right now. Nobody wants you. Nobody wants them. And, you know, I mean, I've said a lot of critical things about Baker Mayfield, and I'm sure, like, a lot of people think that I'm some sort of, like, Baker Mayfield hater, and I've never liked him. You know, there was a chance. There was a time when I gave him a chance. I mean, Baker Mayfield cup from beat-ups. I specifically got that one. Yep. There was, a moment, that, there was a moment that I woke up feeling dangerous. Mm-hmm. I, I got a jersey. You know, yeah, me too. I had this shirt and wore it all the time. Yep. I'm tired yeah. of people giving me that bullshit that I've always just, you know, that I've been a Baker hater. When but, we started the show, when I first joined the show, I was defending Baker. I was the only one on the show defending mm-hmm. Baker. You so, were. I was too. You no, know, I, I really went to bat for him for as long as I could. And then it was just like, this guy has just pushed everyone away. Even, even people like me who were fighting just desperately to see some kind of hope there. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah, I mean, he, he pushed me out, and I, so that. I was with I mean, you on that, Brian. I was like hoping he could get us to a Super Bowl, and then after that season, I mean, he just got exposed. I mean, I I gave him a chance. I I showed you the shit that I bought with his face on it. Okay. Yeah. And his, and his catchphrase. Okay. Mm-hmm. But when I saw that he just was not good enough, that he was not going to do it, I'm like, we can't. Just, yeah. You can't stick with this guy. It's not personal either. Like this happens all the time. Guys get drafted into the league all the time that never pan out to what you know people thought they could. And it's like him taking all of this stuff so personally. It's just bizarre, you know. It's mm-hmm. like you're. This is business. This is the nature of the the game that you play. Like it, it's like he's so shocked by everything that happens in the NFL on a business side of things, and it's like. Bro, this is how it's been done for a long time now. Like, you're the only one who is surprised by all this stuff. I mean, right. I, I'm not surprised. I mean, I think he, in his head, I think he's probably thinking, oh, Cleveland's ungrateful because I'm the only quarterback that took him past the second round since 1999. That That's what he gets stuck in his head. That's what's stuck in his head, and it will be there the rest of his life. Yeah. Well, James, his, real, his real issue is that he is a textbook example of the Dunning-Kruger effect in action. He overrates his own value and his own skill level and doesn't realize where he actually is. Okay. Yep. Thinks he can play hurt. He thinks he can play. Yeah. He he's better than he actually is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and he, is, he doesn't realize it. Yeah. I mean, James, you said this like a couple shows ago, I think. The playoff run completely screwed things up. They didn't want it. Mm-hmm pick up the fifth year option for Baker Mayfield. But when they, when the Browns went on that improbable run to make the playoffs and all that, he forced their hand to be fair. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason that why they picked up his fifth year option and never even entertained offering him a contract extension. Those conversations never happened. Okay. Yeah. They were, that was very telling. And there are a lot of people out on Twitter denying that. Okay. Right. I mean, we have to be hypercritical. I mean, now that we're all in the sports media industry, that's part of our job, which I do view this as a job in one sense. But uh, we have to be hypercritical. I mean, yeah, we all are fans of the Browns, but at the same time, we have to take that part out and just be like, are you good or are you not? It's that simple. Plus, he's, this is more than a typical player, too. He's he's a quarterback. He plays the most important position in the game. Draft he's the a Heisman overall. winner. He's the number one overall pick. You know, he, he comes with all of these, you know, accolades and whatnot that he he sets that bar. He's got that bar for himself. You know, he should have <laughs> known that he had to live up to that, and he hasn't, you know. And no. it's not personal. It's not that we – yeah, I mean, now I could say actually it kind of is. I don't like the guy, but it wasn't about that at first. You know, it was just about the way that he was playing. But now the way that 
he's personalized this whole thing and like wants to have this like vendetta with every member of the Cleveland media that doesn't support him. And it's like, I'm just tired of it. He, he right. Think about going to the Steelers too. Yeah. I feel he'll like go he, anywhere at this point. Yeah. He'll go somewhere that pays him money. Um, but even if it's outside of the NFL too, it might be his only chance. Mm-hmm. He, yeah. he could be the uh, MVP of the fan controlled football league. Maybe <laughs> pick up where Johnny left off. Um, yeah. Right. I mean, I would be. Here's the one thing: if we do cut him and he signs with the Steelers, watch him go on to watch Mike Tomlin somehow be like, "I can fix you," and then he goes on to terrorize us for like years. That always seems to happen. We talked about this on the sports channels yesterday, but it's like any time a player leaves Cleveland, they somehow just magically improve, and they come back and haunt us for like years, and we're just like. Why couldn't you do this when you were with us? I mean, I'll give yeah, that's not gonna happen. If if let's say, for example, if the Browns win the Super Bowl, I'll give this comparison, even though he's not as good as him. Baker Mayfield is like our Drew Bledsoe. Uh here's a better example or a comparison. Uh he is Jared Goff in this situation. Yes. Okay. Yes. Like I'll I mean, I'll give him credit where credit's due. He did he did. Get, get us to the second round. I'm, that, I can never take that away from him, but I don't think he's a great person. Was he the one that got us to the second round? Yes, he was. So, but he, yeah. was he was the quarterback of the team. He didn't get yeah. us there. He was the quarterback yeah. of the team that got, that one got us to the second round. Maybe, yeah. But, yeah, one of 53. You know, that's the thing that he fails to remember is that the, he's not the only reason that they got, you know, where they got. Right. Uh, if anything, it, it could be argued that they were winning in spite of Baker. Yeah. Um, I mean, numbers weren't even that great. You know, like eight. what's that? They, they, they weren't that good. I mean, we had this conversation before the season about a year ago where I was trying to explain, and I've had this argument with people going on for over a year on the internet. The, the year that Baker was successful in 2020, he was a passenger in the offense. He wasn't the driver of the offense. He wasn't Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, uh, Josh Allen type. He was right. a guy that he was along for the ride. That's a good way to describe it, yeah. Yeah. Not even a game manager either. Like, game manager is in charge, you know. Mm-hmm. He's, he's more of a, a game follower. Like, follow mm-hmm. the game plan and execute, and that's it, you know. Yep. I mean, the only – you could make an argument that the only reason we beat the Steelers in the wild card game is because Pittsburgh shot themselves in the foot. I mean, uh, uh, I mean that game started as poorly as it possibly could for them. That Steelers team wasn't that good. Okay, that's they, the other thing. They, they overachieved. They maxed out early in the season. They they came to a complete crash at the end of the season, mm-hmm. uh, and like they weren't that good. Their record was a mirage. Okay. Yeah. And they got exposed in the, down the stretch and in that playoff game. Yeah. I've got to find my tweet from before I mean, that season. Like a, or 11 and 0. I know that I tweeted this is the worst 11 and 0 football team of all time. And mm-hmm. here's the other thing, too, is that even in that week 17 game, when it was win and you're in for the Browns, we were playing against the Steelers' backups. And we, mm-hmm. I think we only won by two. They, they didn't win by much. Um, like if Baker Mayfield is as good as he says he is, or as good as he thinks he is, we should have won by 14 at least, yeah. you know what I mean? Or at least a larger score. Yeah. I mean, if Baker was such the great quarterback in that Steelers game, they would have not came back. Exactly. Have closed it out. Chris, I mean, you that's had that- exactly what I'm saying, Chirk. Large Man, lead just, and you blow it. Listen to the teams that that Pittsburgh team lost to after starting 11 0, too. It was the Commanders, <laughs> not good. Uh, the the Bengals, who at the time were three, they finished three and 10 that year, three, 10 and one. Um, so yeah, like they they lost to some really bad teams before that playoff game against us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they, they weren't they weren't that good. Okay, yeah, yeah. and you know. When it comes when it comes to to Baker and and beating that team and whether he where he sits, I mean the one number I always come back to is he leads the league in interceptions since he was drafted. Okay, 
that's not a good thing to lead the league. <laughs> Especially in our offense where he's not throwing the ball 50 times. A game. Right. And like, that number would make a lot more sense for these gunslingers. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. when Favre would lead the league in interceptions, he'd also lead the league in touchdowns, you know, because he was just slinging it. But, like, this is a different situation. He's only throwing the ball, you know, 20 to 25 times a game, and he leads the league in interceptions. Like, that's bad. Right. I mean, going back to that playoff run for a second, yeah, we closed – we only lost 22-17, but that's because Mahomes got hurt. If Mahomes doesn't get injured, Kansas City was on their way to blowing us out by, I would say, 30. Yeah, that game was never really going to end up being close. No. Yeah, I mean, the, that game was close, but it, it, it really wasn't as close as what the that's score said. Yeah, right. yeah, that's yeah. that's what that is. People are going to say, oh, did you see how well Baker played to get us back into that game and all that? So what? We We just said it. If Mahomes doesn't get injured, we get blown out. Yeah, probably. Yeah, but probably. And how many times did we see, you know, in Baker's career when the ball was in his hands at the end of a game in position to to win? It happened a lot. Like he he was given that opportunity time and time again, and it just fell short every time. He's just he's just not good enough those situations. I mean. Uh, against like actual good teams, I don't think he ever had a game-winning drive against an actual good team. I don't think so either. There were multiple times this season you could point to, like week it, one. He had zero game-winning drives this season. This is the first time he didn't have a single comeback or whatever game-winning drive in, yeah. in his career. And, and there, there were multiple times this season where he had the opportunity to lead the team down the field, yeah. less than four minutes left, ball in his hand, down by a score or less, and he failed. Yep. Yep, that that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, I can think of two examples of that, three examples right off the bat. Week one against Kansas City, week mm -hmm. five against the Chargers, and week eight against the Steelers. Three golden opportunities where you're in position to lead the team down the field, and week one he throws a stupid interception when the guy's grabbing at his feet. I mean – there's an argument to be made that he was trying to throw the ball out of bounds. He, he wasn't. That's horseshit. We've seen him make that exact throw millions of times. Not oh, really, man. but you know, it's it's that that zip bullet throw to the guy on the sideline. He got hit, which resulted in becoming that little lame duck pass that got easily picked off. Yeah, but he wasn't throwing it away. He was trying to rifle it into. I think that was Harrison Bryant. Yeah, he was trying to force something into Harrison Bryant. I think that is. That's how I remember it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At first, I thought it was. I thought it was the throwaway. Actually, actually, first I, it was what actually I think happened. Then the uh, the hive mind of the internet made me think, oh, maybe he was trying to throw it away. And I'm like, no bullshit. I'm gonna watch this again. He's trying to. He's got trying to right flat into Harrison Bryant. Right, and this is before the injury too. So mm -hmm. it's like everybody that's like, oh, well, he, you know, he got injured. Like, no one. He wasn't injured to start the season, and he started the season much like he ended it. <laughs> it wasn't that good. He's just just a lot of. He's not a good decision maker. I'm sorry, no. he's yeah. not. He, he's he, he still can't read the field post snap. Like I don't remember. I saw something on the internet and I commented on like unless he's taller and can suddenly read the field, it's not going to matter. Uh, Baker, Baker in the first Baker. half can read the field. He really can't read the field in the first half. Um, he just doesn't throw as many interceptions in the first half, but maybe because he's less aggressive in the first half. <laughs> but uh, he should stay. He should have just stayed that way throughout the season. Maybe he could have won more games. He he just stinks. He's, he's not good, not good enough. enough. And he's not good enough to be a starter in this league, and that's why, like the whole, you know, oh, he's gonna go somewhere, and we're gonna be haunted by him, and it's gonna be a and like no, that happens with a lot of players. It's not gonna happen with Baker because he's a dumpster fire of a quarterback. I mean, like, look, no team wants him. Okay. Right. And, and I'll say the, the best thing to come out of this entire thing where the Browns are going to be getting rid of Baker is all of the Sooners fans on Browns Twitter, just being like Thanos snapped out of existence. It is beautiful. Okay. Yeah. No more Sooner crap. No more Baker bros. This is so much better. No more progressive <laughs> commercials. <laughs> I'm no progressive commercials. Right. I'm I'm fine with the commercials. I never hated on them for the commercials because they're actually good commercials, and it's hard. To I hated on them for him. 
I, I hate it on the forum because it's just like when he had a bad game and then did one of those commercials. Look in 20 Baker commercials after, you know, you see him play like shit. Yeah. <laughs> He's not, like, gonna have, he's not going to have it, those commercials anymore. We, we know he's not going to wherever yeah. he goes next. I mean, he's no. not going to have progressive commercials anymore. I, what remember, are we going to get at home with Deshaun Watson now? No, we're not going to get any of those. Um, progressive's not going pro, to tie yeah. themselves to that. But uh, his, his progressive commercials aren't going to continue, I don't think. I mean, he should have waited to do those commercials. you got to earn that. You have yeah. to earn oh, that. Get your money while you can. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on. Hold on. No, I think first you have to thing, earn it. First things first, Brian. You're right. Earn your money while you can. Second, those commercials didn't start till year two of Baker Mayfield. So, fact check. Yeah. Yeah, true. But I'm going to steal no, a line. From, I'm going to steal a line from your favorite analyst, James Stephen A. Smith. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> he had more commercials than touchdowns. <laughs> True. It's Sorry. true. Baker Mayfield's the quarterback version of Mac Wilson. Okay, Mac Wilson <laughs> tweets the tackle ratio. Shout out Zach Jackson. Okay. Yeah. That's what that is. Uh, I just but, hate this idea that like guys shouldn't like get sponsorship opportunities until after they do things. Like like who would you ever not sign your name on the dotted line for a million dollars if someone wanted to give it to you? Like, and in that case, stay you? local. Stay local. I don't think those progressive is local. Progressive's headquartered in Mayfield. Yeah. Why do you, think, local. Why do you think Jacob Field got changed to Progressive Field? Progressive's a local company, Shirk. Yeah. yeah. They I are an company, but they are who else is? Them. Rocket Mortgage, you know. Well, they're out of Michigan, but yeah, like the, these well, companies. Gilbert's from Michigan. Right. That, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like these companies are sponsored by local companies or companies that the owners own. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're not gonna. Sense. You're not gonna see the Brown Stadium if once uh, their first energy uh, uh, sponsorship goes away, sponsored by Publix, okay, or right. Ralph, or exactly. Wiggly Wiggly. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it's it's gonna be a local sponsored company by Shitcoin or whatever the new something is. something recognizable to the local market. That's what yeah. it's gonna be. Yeah, NFT Park. Or whatever. <laughs> oh, you mean crypto.com arena? Yeah, there you go. Do you, yeah. Would you say the Baker commercials were worse than the Hugh Jackson ones, though? With the with the Mr. Hugh yeah, Jackson. Hugh Jackson's, Jackson's were worse. Uh, I'll, Those I'll, were terrible. They get yeah. 16, and then all of a sudden, hey, look at this. Look, look at uh, the Roman Burger right here. They had the Roman Burger commercial before he went 0 16, but like. It, the, any of the Mr. Hero commercials were terrible because Mr. Hero is terrible. Okay. It is trash food. <laughs> oh man, I love the Roman burger. I, I like the I like the Roman burger when I was like 21 years old. It's mm. so disgusting. Like, what it are is. we doing? Oh, there, are so, there are so many of those damn things by my house. It's like a goddamn plague. Mm. Yeah. The what worst is, oh, I mean, shitty commercials. We got to talk about the Jack Conklin and. Uh, <laughs> Oh, oh no! No, we are not talking about that terrible. Uh, the awful commercial. Truffle, that is oh. that's awful. That's embarrassing. Baker, your favorite, okay. Your okay, city's so. favorite quarterback. Uh, Get the fuck off my thank team. You. <laughs> thank you. Get the so fuck off my TV. All right, so people that aren't here anymore, stop talking about them. People that could be coming back, Odell. Oh, I heard about that. Odell now, Beckham it, Jr. might be coming back to Cleveland. <laughs> I see okay. what you're trying to do there, Brian. That was a good attempt. I like it. I mean, once OBJ he had that, might like, be coming back. Situation, he, wanted to, he, he hopped on the bandwagon. Hey, and who was ahead of this situation? James and I both were ahead of this situation. Yes, you we, were. We've kind of called yep. it from a mile away. It was <laughs> – that we had we had a thirty thousand foot view to watch this transpire, and it's happening. And I cannot be more excited for it. Assuming he's healthy and that you know he's still capable of being himself, but uh, it seems like the interest is definitely mutual. As long as he's going to be able to recover from that knee injury, yeah. Beckham has reportedly not closed the door on Cleveland, uh, despite everyone trying to say terrible things to Mary Kay Cabot on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he easily could have said, fuck Cleveland. Yeah, he said he hasn't closed the door. Then there was the Instagram video of John Johnson the other night saying OBJ is going to be coming back, but you didn't hear it from me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you think he uh, is going to tell Von Miller, hey, I remember when I said don't come to Cleveland? Let's go. 
Well, yeah. Bob Miller's in Buffalo now. Yeah, so. Buffalo yeah, now. We, yeah, we completely forgot about Bob Miller going to Buffalo in our little yeah. round robin mock draft thingy. Yeah, I mean, he's getting up there in age too. That Khalil Mack thing and him, like those those guys are getting old. You know, they're getting up there. Yeah, I, I still so- like that pairing of what the Chargers did with Khalil Mack, J.C. Jackson. I if mean, they can stay healthy with them and Bosa and all them. Yeah, it's going to be impressive. Right. But they, the problem is, is none of those guys can stay healthy. And, and Mac has taken the quite the drop off uh, from once he went from Vegas to Chicago, and True. he's only getting older because that's how time works. Yep. And you don't say. And, and, and Joey Bosa gets hurt all the time. Mm-hmm. He's made of glass. Like he's stud. that's what get hurt a little bit in college from yeah. time to time, but that dude's gotten hurt all the time with Chargers. Yeah, yep. It's unfortunate too because he's both proposes are like that. They're both made of glass. Yeah, it, it's got to be some genetic with them because they they just cannot stay healthy. Their, their bones are just like you said, made up of glass. Just bones like of glass. Pigs. But anyway, no. going back to OBJ, if he comes back. That'd be hilarious. Would be I awesome. would laugh my ass off. <laughs> That'd be so oh, funny. Man. It'd be so funny. And, and you know, uh, Jarvis and, and Clowney might be coming back too. Right. To, to see the whole game come back after everybody was like out on Baker and everything. Mm-hmm. To, see, to see Baker out on the outside looking in and those guys all back on the field with Deshaun That'd Watson. Be so funny. It'd be so, so funny. fucking great. Oh, my. I would just. If I was Baker Mayfield, I would be like, "Really? You, 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 you're doing this to me? Like, you think, you think I'm happy? the scapegoat now?" Well, he's he was always the problem. This remember, is football remember, football. Like, do you remember when everyone was trying to make it everybody else's fault? But and, Baker, and uh, he's running the wrong routes, and uh, yeah, it was always the about everybody was else. Bad. Baker. Freddie Kitchens. Well, actually, Freddie Kitchens was bad. I'm he sorry. was. Freddie bad. Kitchens was bad. Hugh Jackson was bad too. But y- y- you saw him finger point at every chance he got. I-, I mean, go back to college. Cliff Kingsbury was the problem for him. Yeah, as a freshman. So, like, like, what are we doing? Like, this guy loves to deflect blame. It's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That that's who Baker Mayfield is. That's who he's always going to be. I don't think that's going to change. I mean, I remember there were like red flags to begin with when he was given the middle fingers to Ohio State when he was running away from the cops. He didn't give the middle finger to Ohio State. I think that was Kansas, maybe. But he did the he did the uh, the flag plant. Okay. Yeah. Running away from the cops. That was another red flag. Why do Why do we draft him first overall? He, John Dorsey felt like he had to draft somebody that was like looked the most NFL ready because he knew he was on the hot seat. John Dorsey wasn't on the hot seat. Yeah, he wasn't on the hot seat. I would say that tandem was him and Hugh Jackson. Uh, Hugh, Hugh Jackson was on the hot seat. That was the first year of Dorsey being there. He wasn't on the hot seat. Oh, yeah, you're right. My bad. Yeah, he wasn't on the hot seat yet. I mean, uh, he thought that Baker Mayfield was a winner. He thought that he was – it's the traditional box draft pick story. This guy's a winner. He's fiery. Uh, he pumps people up and all this other crap. And it's just – I mean, if you if you go back, the conversation about the the quarterbacks there it was always between Darnold and Baker. Uh, Lamar Jackson was complete afterthought. Josh Rosen was kind of in that discussion a little bit, and nobody knew what was going to happen with Josh Allen, uh, where he was going to get drafted. I mean, as a, a day one Josh Allen guy, okay, I would have loved Josh Allen, okay, but he went to Buffalo, and good for Buffalo. I, I mean, personally wanted Sam Darnold. I know. I regret. I, I I was the same way, Josh. I yeah. was the same way, but looking back, it was the be- it was better decision not to draft. Although Chirk, I will say this: I I don't think Darnold's a bad quarterback. I just he's bad. He's bad. Give him some. No. Give him. Give him one more chance, James. Chirk. No. What he gets? Why is he another chance? He stinks. He is Chirk. the second coming Mark Sanchez. What are we doing? He, he had, he's only like twenty five years old. Wait, Who cares? Chirk. He sucks. Chirk, Chirk, I think part of the reason why he sucks now is because he went to the Jets, and the Jets seem to ruin everybody. I mean, here's, the, here's the problem with Sam Darnold, okay? Sam Darnold was never a, a great passer at USC, number one. Number two, 
He fumbles a ton, okay? And know what he still does? Fumbles a ton. He's just not good. But am I wrong that the Jets absolutely broke him? I don't know about that. I mean, he he played exactly how I thought he would play. And bad was it. You know, I, I didn't think he was going to be good. I didn't think he was going to have like this. This he's going to be the the answer for the Jets at quarterback. You know what I mean? I, I just like I never thought he was going to be good. I, I was always concerned with this fumble, this, uh, this fumble ratio, and how often he did. And he fumbles a lot. So for a lot of those, uh, a lot of those like bust lists, he's going to be on that list, isn't he? Sam Donald's on that bust list because he is a bust. So is Josh Rosen. List? Josh Rosen's an all-time bust. Yes. Not the all-time bust, but an all-time bust. Who He's is the league, league? Huh? Who Who's is it? the all-time bust? Uh, Ryan Lee. Jamarcus Russell. Marcus Russell. Marcus Russell went number one. Ryan Lee was two. Ryan Lee was number two. I, I got the number one. Russell was number one. Ryan Lee was number two in the draft. So that I think that gives Jamarcus Russell the, uh, the little boost there. Mm-hmm. Um, also, Jamarcus Russell was taken ahead of Calvin Johnson and Joe Thomas. Okay, Ooh. two, two Ooh. Hall of and Fame Adrian players. Peterson too, and Adrian Peterson. Good point. Darrell Revis. Lots of guys. Yeah. yeah, they were all from that draft class. Wow. Although they did have Namdi Asmola, so I can understand their logic. I mean, they were they're, they were always going to take a quarterback number one number one overall. Right. Uh, and and I do believe that. Um, before um, Al Davis stepped in and interfered, they were leaning towards Calvin Johnson. And, yeah. And Is Zion Davis Williamson uh, Jamarcus wrestling himself out of the NBA? Uh, maybe. Because that the, did it not feel like Jamarcus Russell ate his way out of the NFL? Yeah. Yeah, he, it, did. he had some it, weight it, issues immediately that to really hinder him and his abilities. That dude was over 300 pounds by the time. It's huge. He, he was with the – Raiders. I mean, yeah. uh, th- th- that guy was a. Everyone in the building knew that guy was a bust within a couple weeks of him being on the team. My favorite story always is that they gave him DVDs. They told him to watch it. He comes back the next day, asked him what he watched, and he said some blitz packages. The DVDs were blank. He never watched them. Okay, yeah, they set him up the ruse because <laughs> they they, were, they didn't think he was actually studying or working on anything. It turns out that he wasn't like. Yeah, that was an all-time like gotcha move. Yeah. I've never heard that story. You've never was, heard that story. That's an all-time oh, okay. story. Didn't uh, was that? It was Kirk Morrison who t- told that story. I think. I, I think so, but yeah, like you, you're right. You you look at so like Ryan Leaf had his own issues, like sure, like going to to Vegas, like. I think the night of the draft or before his introductory press conference, that might've been all the same two day period. There. Trying to be the new was a look for, just, for him. Just trying to be like NSYNC on the mic. How about Brown's biggest draft bust? Are we going Baker? No. Trent Richardson? Yes. No. I wouldn't say Trent Richardson. Um, damn, Courtney? That's, that's a tough one. Manziel? Court- Court- I'm yes. going Trent Richardson. Yes. Manziel? Manziel. Man, I'm putting Manziel. I really don't like him. I like with Justin Gilbert. Oh, uh, yeah, Justin Gilbert was picked seventh, man's or eighth or whatever yeah. it was. Manziel was twenty-two. Yep, that's true. I'm, yeah, we got Manziel with our second pick in the first round. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was the pick we got from Indiana. So it was, yep. So it wasn't our first pick. So that can't be really as high of a bus in my. Yeah, so I think Gilbert's up there. Um, man, Baker. I'm going Trent Richardson because. He was so – he. we thought he was this great running back at Alabama, and then he gets to the NFL, and it's just, uh, can you do anything? Yeah, but, I mean, well, <laughs> let's assume that Baker's future career goes how we expect it to go, and he's out of the league shortly. Um, <laughs> he, he will take the number one spot then. Yeah, yeah, no. that's where I was going with that. Yeah, he, he, will. he would definitely take the number one spot. If, if he just kind of goes off in the sunset and just, like, doesn't play anymore – Mm-hmm. And sure, if, if he honestly, I think there's a spot for him in the NFL as a career backup. Okay, yeah, he's yeah. not gonna like that, but that's, that's the what problem. He has. That's, yeah. If he would have embraced that role, like he he could have a Graham Harrell esque career and make a bunch. I was of gonna money. say I was gonna say Colt McCoy because he's still in the league. 
Yeah, true. I, I coming out of the draft, I compared Baker Mayfield to a very strong armed Colt McCoy. Yeah, yeah that's a good comparison. Honestly, because they're they're relatively the same size. Yeah, they both played in the Big Twelve. They both have a little bit of mobility to their game, but they're not runners. Yeah. But yeah, I'm glad we have to get a quarterback design too. run with Baker. <laughs> Could you yeah. imagine we did quarterback design runs with Baker? Oh, God, that would have been not good to watch. I wouldn't <laughs> mind getting him, seeing him get blown up by some dudes. But. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on. This is a big, big uh, announcement happening over in New York. They're rolling back the vaccine mandate for athletes, which is going to have an impact for a lot, a lot of players. Um is going to make probably the biggest impact for a team like the Nets. It's also going to make a big impact baseball-wise for the Mets and the Yankees. Big time. For them, this is very, very important because there are still unvaccinated players on their rosters. Uh, I believe Aaron Judge is one of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe you're right. Anthony Rizzo is one, I believe, too, as well. Um, With If they were not going to be able to play in their home stadium, and they already can't play in Toronto, okay, so – they already can't go to Toronto to play. So that's going to be like nine or 10 games against the Blue Jays that they're not going to be able to play. It, that would be so crushing for those teams. It would completely alter the landscape of the AL East. 100%. 100%. Yeah. This is big time, big time news for for the entire New York market in sports because they <laughs> they seem to all have issues with uh, unvaccinated players. So, um, yeah, and – Kyrie, you know, he's looked very, very well when he has been on the court. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, yeah it's exciting for a team like the Nets that's on the rise now, on, you know, might be on the opposite end of the uh, play in tur- They're in the play in tournament now, is what I meant to say. And, you know, but I, I think that's a team that can catapult into that six, five position and make a run. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know my feelings about this whole Kyrie thing. I'm not going to go on. Don't worry, I'm not going to go on a tangent about it, but mm. I don't like him. I just don't. I'm not a big fan of him, but I got to say I'm grateful for the shot. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, I, unlike, unlike other fans out there, I'm not going to be like he didn't contribute to the Cavs because he did. He did. Yeah. I, I, still, am. Fan. I still am. He's, I am. Incredible, he's an incredible basketball player. He hit the, the yeah. most important shot in Cavs history. Uh, I, I still like him when he was in Boston. I still like him when he's when he's in Brooklyn. Yeah, the dude's a little out there sometimes. Okay, but a lot of people are, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> to be honest, like before he went off the deep end, deep end. Like one of my favorite uh, you know, musical artists was Kanye. Then he went just too far for me. But yeah. like I was, I was accepting a lot of his. Uh, eccentricities yes personality wise he's like the opposite of kanye well i'm just i'm just saying like eccentric people yeah i don't know i just don't see anything bad like what has Kyrie done to hurt anybody yeah i get i get that but just a lot yeah, of I just, oh the, that's a bad point with the vaccine mandate yeah. but mm-hmm. yeah. i mean like he's not a guy that's getting accused of violent crimes or drug usage or mm-hmm. like yeah. it's, it's people have mm-hmm. problems with him being a little out might, there personality wise and views of history and things that you know might be a little out there but yeah, I just don't see him as like this villain character that all these people in Cleveland do. Like, I oh think yeah, the, the Earth is flat. That's, that's another thing he gets hate for. Yeah, he was a flat earther for for a minute. Oh he, yeah, he gave yeah. up on that. But that, but then he said the trick was I wanted to see what people do. That was like his. That's what he said afterwards. I I, just, I, I remember he said that he got down some rabbit holes and he got too far and couldn't find his way back. Essentially, yeah, and yeah. That happens to people sometimes. Yeah, anybody who yeah. dabbles in the world of conspiracies, that'll happen to you. Yeah. You'll yeah. Down some funky rabbit holes when you dive into that world. And I think that potentially he was led astray a few times with some of the things that he's latched onto. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like that's happened to most of I personally us. love the guy. I think he's, I, I think his number should be retired in Cleveland, personally. Same. Yeah. I yeah. appreciate, I wouldn't be surprised if his number gets retired in Cleveland and I wouldn't be opposed to it. I appreciate him as a basketball player. He's one of the best guards in the league. I just think he 
I just don't agree with his viewpoint. So, you yeah, know. that's fine. Yeah, that, that, that's that, how that's, I view it. That's how, if we were to go through all of our viewpoints together, we would all disagree on something together. Oh, well, exactly. 100%. oh, yeah. right. I mean, me and Brian, we've had text messages back and forth where we disagree on shit. Like, oh, uh, yeah, several. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I know. Not, you know what I mean. So that's just that's just how it goes. If, but if someone agrees with me on everything. That just feels weird. Yeah, for me, Kyrie's just too much, a little too much of a whack job. If that makes sense. But who isn't? That's a. Uh, I, I think whack job's a little bit strong. I mean, it's I, a little I, bit harsh. Yeah, that I is a little bit. I think out there, out there, eccentric. Uh, eccentric. Okay, except he's you a little mean. too eccentric for me. Person. There you go. I think that I think that's uh, a little bit more. Uh, Do you okay. think he's selfish? Is that like the stance that you're taking? Like his? Yeah, I view him as a little bit selfish. Like, because okay. for me, it's like he's the one that I felt like recruited Durant to Brooklyn, and then because he wanted to put this championship team together and all that, and then he goes and decides, nope, I'm not going to get the vaccine and pretty much leaves Kevin Durant out to dry a little bit. I'm like, dude, this is your idea. Why are you... I think Kevin Durant was on Kyrie's side, if I'm not mistaken. I don't... He kind of flip-flopped back and forth a little bit. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. I, I could understand that. He probably was like, yeah. like human rights and then another day, like, please take it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, the whole thing with the the, uh, January 6th events, like Kyrie saying, like, I need to take a few days off because of that whole thing. Like, I'm, he did say that. Interesting. I'm pretty sure he said that. Like, the events of January 6th, I'm pretty sure he said, like, I need to take, like, a siesta or whatever. Yes, so that's a nap. (laughs) (laughs) You might be thinking of a different word. uh... Fiesta? That is not the word you're, you meant. <laughs> sabbatical. That's probably what yes, sabbatical. Is probably I don't know. A this show has is gone off the goddamn rails. Anyways, let's let's get back to let's Real. get off Kyrie now. Uh, <laughs> there is a <clears throat> some more movement and free agency for baseball and a trade and some other stuff that happened. So let's start here at the top. Nick Castellanos to the Phillies. Uh, drive to left field. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's just going to – every single time it's a home run. It just, yep. That's all it's going to happen. But uh, the Phillies apparently are de- are just dead set and trying to have, like, the world's worst defense of all time. Apparently. Like, you have two DHs in Castellanos and Schwarber that they just signed in, like, a week. You know, their defense is already bad before. Okay. It's going to be really <laughs> this year. <laughs> <laughs> Time out. <laughs> All right. I'm taking my time out. Bye. <laughs> so with Cassie Allison and Schwarber, they add those two guys. Neither of those two are strong defenders either. Get back yeah. here, Unger. He was just joking. <laughs> they were both uh, they were both corner outfielders already. And you know, you look at Bryce Harper, he was a corner outfielder. So like between those three, one of those is gonna guys gonna be a DH every game. Right, uh, preferably Schwarber or Castellanos, and not Harper. But like, I don't know what the hell they're doing. Like, they're just going all in. Apparently, they believe in the analytics that the some of their numbers are telling them that defense isn't that important, and that these other things are because they have abandoned defense completely on that team, James. Like, <laughs> it, it, they they're like historically bad defensively this team if <clears throat> if they have some of these players out on the field so yeah I, this is alarming in a way for me but god they're loaded though you know they're so loaded they're gonna hit the fuck out of the ball they're gonna score runs like like nobody's business i mean real real muto uh reese hoskins uh gene Sarguri. gene Sarguri is a very underrated player by the way yeah. Uh, so be at least in the regular season, but like in the postseason, that defense and stuff like that matters so much when these games are separated by inches, you know. Like, so it'll be interesting. This outfield group, like, they can hit a ton, but oh god, they cannot play defense for the life of them. Let's, I mean, let's look at here: Schwarber, uh, Bryce Harper, Nick Castellanos, uh, Adubel Herrera. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> It's just National League teams 
now that they have the DH, they're just trying to get as many power bats as they can. And it's like, dude, you only have one DH. I, I mean, they just... They're not going to have any defense. I, the, the people I feel, I feel bad about the work the most are the pitching staff. Any, anyone on this team that's not a strikeout guy that is a more pitch to contact guy, uh, I'm looking at one right now. One Kyle Gibson. Okay. Yeah. Uh, best of luck, buddy. <laughs> best of luck, buddy. The, the, and that's the other thing, James, is they can't bring guys like that to town anymore. Like if if that's the style of pitcher you are, like yeah, not on this team. Uh, lucky for them, they still have Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola. They can strike them out with the best of them. But right. they got they got a, quite a few guys that are more pitch cut to contact and strikeout guys, and that's going to be yeah. There's gonna be a lot of twelve to ten finals uh, with the Phillies this year. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. A lot of home runs on both. Do you, think, do you think the Phillies can challenge the Braves for the division title? Sure, but I probably wouldn't even pick the Braves to win that division currently. Interesting. Um. Wow, they're the defending World Series champs, and you want to pick them? They were like what an eighty-nine win team last year. Yeah, not they were not a high seed. They, they were not a, a high seed. Uh, I I love Ronald Acuna. I think Matt Olson's a, a a great player too. But like nobody expected that from the Braves, right? No, I mean, no one did. I mean, they, and they lost two of their outfielders that they brought in because. Uh, uh, at the deadline because of free agency. Right. Uh, and Marcelo Zuna is a complete question mark because you don't know what the hell he's going to do. Like, I don't know. Like, if I'm picking teams in that division to win the division, it's hard not to pick the Mets, okay? Mm-hmm. It really is. They're one, two at the top of their rotation, DeGrom and Scherzer. Max Scherzer, number two starter. Are you kidding? I like, know. Uh, it's insane to think that he's a number two on any team. And, and you, you look at their batters, they still got Lindor, they got Pete Alonso, Jeff McNeil, J.D. Davis, Dom Smith, and they just added Starling Marte and Mark Cannon to that mix. Like, that's, yeah. that's one hell of a lineup. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I got to agree with you on that one. One of the better divisions in baseball now. Mm-hmm. And they still, you know, they've got Carlos Carrasco, too, uh, in their rotation. They still got. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what's his name? Taiwan Walker. Mm-hmm. Seth Lugo is a solid back end of the bullpen guy. Edwin Diaz, when he's on, is lights out. But, you know, when he's off, uh, you'll see Frank the Tank call him Ed Luz Diaz. So. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tank and his puns are so good. He, he's the best. I can't wait for the Mets to lose uh, the first game of the season and Frank to have a complete meltdown. Oh, 162. He's going, oh, 162. Yep, 100%. <laughs> You, you know it's coming. But uh, moving on, uh, Carlos Correa signed with the Twins. Uh, Interesting. I, like, I don't know what the Twins are doing. I don't know. It, it, it's a it's an upgrade. Sure, it's an addition. Like, Carlos Correa's market obviously was never there. Uh, there were no big deals that were even on the table for him. He said so himself. But, like, Correa – but the twins is just like, eh, it, it, the way this is contract is structured, there's opt outs after year one and year two. So like if he has a good year, opt out of year one, go and see if you get that big deal. But I'd be very, very uh, cautious about giving uh, a big deal to a, like a six foot six shortstop with back issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's listed I mean, at six, four, but I think you're right. He's closer to six. To- <laughs> <laughs> He's huge. Yeah. I don't know what the Twins are doing, and I thought Carlos Correa valued winning. Apparently, he doesn't, because the Twins aren't winning anytime soon. I mean, uh, a hype, I mean, it's a possible that the Twins could surprise in the AL Central this year. I don't think they're going to. I think they're banking on last year being an anomaly, and that they'll just go right back to being what they were before. I mean, they still have some pretty decent hitters in their lineup with Max Kepler and you know Miguel Sano when he's. Uh, actually making contact with the ball and not being demoted to single A because he can't hit anything. Uh, he's a pretty good hitter. A like, lot of smart baseball minds picked the Twins to win the division last year. You know, so, I did not. Yeah, <laughs> I I, I'm not, not one of them. But but yeah, like you're you're right. Like they have some things in place there. But like yeah, I don't think last year was an anomaly. I think you're right. That's how they're approaching it. Is you know last year was it is an off off year for us. But I think that it's more of the rule and less the exception in this instance. And they, they acquired Gary Sanchez and Gio Urshela. And they still have uh, 
Jorge Polanco and Luis uh, Arise, and their their outfield's okay. Uh, I can't believe Jake Cave is still on their team. Okay, that yeah. guy that guy's just been around there forever. You know, but Trevor Larnack's a guy to watch. Uh, Byron Buxton, whether or not he can ever stay healthy, uh, like everyone's always looking for the Byron Buxton like breakout, and when he starts to do it, he gets hurt. Yep. Yep. If I had to pick an AL Central Division winner right now, I know the White Sox had a really good year last year. I'm not ready to say they're that sustainable. So I'm picking Detroit. I mean, that's possible. Detroit made some moves. They did sign Javi Baez. You know. Yep. Yeah. I, I wouldn't pick Detroit. Uh, um, personally, I'm not picking Detroit. You're um, sticking with the White Sox? I would probably I'm White Sox. Yeah, I'm leaning White Sox for sure. I think I mean, both teams make the playoffs. I just – I like how Detroit is go- going at it a little bit more. And- I mean, Detroit made some good moves. Tucker Barnhart getting him from the Reds, that was a good move for, for catcher. Brian, I know how you like your catchers. <laughs> I, do. I love my catchers. You know, they still got Jonathan Scope and Miguel Cabrera. Uh, Jamer Candelario is still like – is he going to do something? Like, ever since they got him from the Cubs a couple years ago – I believe that was in the Castellanos trade. That guy's just been like, meh. But mm-hmm. uh, Javi Baez, Akil Badu was fun for a minute early on last year. But, yeah, he had a moment in the sun, but that kind of fizzled out. Yeah. yeah. R- Robbie Grossman was okay. Uh, Daz Cameron's one of their highly highly uh, regarded prospects. Victor Reyes, same goes for him. But, like, I just – I can't look at, like, this team. Like, this team's going to go toe-to-toe with the White Sox and win. I mean, Casey Mize, he's got a lot of promise. Eduardo yeah. Rodriguez, I was surprised he went to Detroit. Spencer Turnbull, Terry Scoobel, Matt Manning, Michael Pineda, round out your starters. But, like, I don't know. I can't really I can't really pick that team to, to win the division. Maybe they get second or third, but not win. Yeah. yeah. I get I, what you're saying. I just I'm, – I'm iffy on the White Sox. I'm, if last year was the, really the start of something or was it just a flash in the pan type thing and – from what I've seen of Detroit, I I think I see a little more promise from them. So pulling up just some projections. That's um, why I'm going with Detroit more. Uh right now, this particular article from eight hours ago, their computer project projections have Chicago winning, let's see, eighty-six games and Detroit winning seventy. So for what it's worth, um, these computer models seem to be favoring the White Sox by about 10 games over Detroit. Yeah. What did so, the computer models have Cleveland at? They, this particular one has us with the Detroit Tigers at 78 wins and 84 losses. That seems to be a little bit generous. I don't know if this team can even get to 70 wins. No, they'll get they'll get to 70 wins. They're not Baltimore Orioles. Back. Yeah, they're, they're not going to lose 110 games, but they might lose 100. <laughs> um, but we'll, we'll get to we'll get to the Guardians in a minute. But uh, we got a couple more signings. Trevor Story goes to the Red Sox to play second base. I love that move for Boston. It, it's a great move for the Red Sox because they kept Trevor Story going from to New York. It's incredible, really, how it worked out for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They got a good lineup. Hell they, yeah, they do. And and you know maybe a year down the line, uh, they swap out Bogarts and Story, or you know push Bogarts to third, Devers to first or DH or something. Mm-hmm. But uh, Story is just going to slide in at second base, and that's mostly because of the the timing of the signing and with the I guess season starting in like what two weeks mm-hmm. or three weeks I think. So like. Yeah, so he's gonna be at second. I think that's a great pickup for the Red Sox. Red Sox are definitely gonna be gonna be uh, a trouble for that AL East. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the Braves a little bit earlier. Kenley Jansen goes to Atlanta. I don't know what to do or think about this. Like, this is a guy that has been just kind of cracks have been forming in his uh, his performance over the past couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, he's a guy that once had some real promise and has just kind of been had it trending in the wrong direction, we'll say. Mm-hmm. So this one didn't really do anything for me. I don't think it particularly made Atlanta any better. Hello, Beth. Hi, I mean, Beth. 
it's a, it's an arm at the back end of their bullpen. You can never have enough bullpen guys. So that's well, the I thing. Think. Anytime anytime you hear about a team like this adding an arm to bullpen, it's like yeah, okay, you know, they probably needed to do that, but um, yeah, not really a splash move here. Yeah, I probably would rather have Atlanta's bullpen than Phillies. Phillies has got uh, the implosion crew with <laughs> Jerry Spamilia uh, leading the way there. Yeah, I'd rather have their bullpen down there in Atlanta. Yeah, and uh, a former Brave goes down to Miami. Jorge Soler is now with the Marlins. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. That's uh, that, that caught me off guard. Uh, yeah, 100%. Uh, the one, because the Marlins spent money, uh, and they spent money on Jorge Soler when they could have spent a little more and got Nick Castellanos, uh, right. who they were after. But – it's, I mean, Solaire's just going to hit bombs. That's what he's going to do, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's going to hit bombs. He's going to strike out. But, yeah, I, I was really surprised to see him land down there in Miami. Um, uh, yeah, I was too. It, just, it was kind of kind of surprising a little bit. Yeah, that I'd say out of all of these, Korea to the Twins kind of shocked me a little bit, but Solaire to Miami even more so. Yeah, that one was just like, where did this come from? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, there was a trade. Uh, Randall Grechuk swapped for Ramel Tapia, Toronto, and Colorado making that trade. This move has a big impact on the AL East, and here's why. Um, <clears throat> Grechuk basically just destroys Yankee pitching, and now he's out of the division. That's a good point. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah, he was a Yankee killer. Let me see if I can pull it up. I saw uh, I follow a couple of Blue Jays people on Twitter, and they were talking about uh, the impact. Uh, Didn't Toronto have another big signing too? Big signing? I don't think they had a big signing, but um, let's or see. Another, they made a. Big- they traded for Matt Chapman. We talked about that uh, a week and a half ago. Uh, ah, Seventy yeah. career home runs in sixty-four games against the Yankees. Wow. That's incredible. The dude, the dude matches Yankee pitching. So, uh, Yankee fans everywhere, guys will follow some of them. Uh, we're very happy to see Grechuk to no longer be in the division. But uh, I am also happy as a Grechuk uh, fantasy owner to see him go to Colorado and hit boom bombs. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Going to Colorado, anytime you've got a fantasy player and they go to Colorado, it's so exciting. Oh, it's so you, just, you cannot wait until the ball just starts flying off their bat there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had a, uh, a former Cleveland baseball player retire. Andrew Miller has called it a career. One of uh, the goats for bullpen pitchers. Yes. Miller lights uh, out. Okay. That's the reason I'm wearing this shirt today. That Matt run he had in that postseason was so unique in terms of the way that that team used him and, and how efficient he was from start to finish. It's just incredible. One of the most impressive postseason runs by a relief pitcher that I've ever seen. The yeah. dude with nails. He was absolute nails, and the way that they used him completely changed the way pitchers are used now today. Because the, the traditional way was the closer is in the ninth. Yep. Sometimes you got to face the the best guys in the order in the seventh or the eighth. Yep. Right. You need to get them out then. So use your best pitcher against the best guys late in the game, no matter the inning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's why you know Tito won Manager of the Year, and and also you know we got to remember that too because he was making all of the right moves at all the right times. And uh, uh, the way that he used Miller was perfect. And yeah, I mean, it's just one of the all time impressive Cleveland performances by a Cleveland athlete in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think if, if Cleveland had was fully healthy for that series against the Cubs, they would have won it. Oh yeah. I, I stand by if they had Carlos Carrasco, Danny Salazar, Michael Brantley, the, 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 the Indians probably like sweep that series. Are you kidding? There's so much bad luck that went into that. It was just so painful yeah. to watch. To watch that slip through our fingertips is. Uh, mm. I, hate yeah, it. I mean, they probably win fairly easily if they have those three guys right there. Yeah. That changes so much stuff that, that, that we wouldn't have. Uh, you know, uh, Michael Martinez taking the last at bat of that World Series. Which, by the way, uh, there was a, a very real possibility they would have had uh, Josh Tomlin pitch it. Uh, for Michael Martinez, okay, that's incredible. That that's just that's just how bad of a situation that, that they were in, and they're just like, no, we're not going to do that. 
it, it felt like it was just such karma for the way that the Cavs and Warrior series played out with the Draymond injury. And it was like, it, they were, it's the same thing, you know, could the Cavs have won that title if it wasn't for the way that things bounced for the Warriors, you know, and then we, you know, we, they blow the three, one lead. And then here's the, the guardians in the world series, you know, with a three, one lead. Mm-hmm. And then now like they've got three key players injured and it falls through the fingertips. It was mm-hmm. like, we were a year removed from it going the, the other direction with the Cavs, And then it just, it, it sucked. Hey, it Brian. The karmic circle. Hey, Brian, you know, the only team to not blow a three to one series lead in, in 2016. The Pittsburgh Penguins. Ah, yeah, that's right. They did not. They did not. San Jose forced a game six, but Pittsburgh closed them out and won right. their won their fourth Stanley Cup. Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, moving along. Have you seen the proposed Shohei Otani rule? Break it down a little bit for us here. Yeah, team. break it down a little this bit. This one's a little confusing to me. But this is a, this is a, this is specific for <clears throat> for let me let me get it. I want to get it right. So let me just okay. The MLB and Major League Baseball Players Association agreed to a Shohei Otani rule, in which will fold in with the universal DH. Essentially, the rule will allow Otani and other players who may follow in his footsteps to finish out games he pitches in the batting order. Effectively, it adds a second designation to him that depth chart. He will be the pitcher and the DH in games he plays. So, <clears throat> he, Very doesn't have, he doesn't no longer have to be the, the DH. And, you know, you look back when DHs get removed and stuff before you lose your, your – when you make uh, pitchers in your life and it would take away the DH, the DH is still going to be there. Yes. And he's still going to finish hitting. So, yeah. that's, that's going to be – very much impactful. Yeah. It, it's super impactful, and it's interesting because he's the only guy that this is really apt for. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it just speaks to how how big of an impact he's had on the sport already. Like, it, mm-hmm. he had an incredible year last year. MLB obviously wants him to be on the field as often as possible. So, yeah, I think this is a good move. I, I think it makes sense. Um, And I don't think that there's any like competitive reasons why it's unfair necessarily. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I like it. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay with it. it. The rule I'm not okay with the fact that they're bringing back the stupid ghost runner rule in extra innings. I hate it, but I I, I hate that rule. Yeah, it's stupid. It's dumb. Um, but yeah, it is an actual human being, though, Josh. It's not a ghost runner. Um, so it. I do it want to make that distinction. I want it to be an actual ghost. Why do you have to ruin my day, Brian? I mean, no, but that could be a ghost. Always bothers me because when I played, you know, when we played pickup baseball as kids in the Sandlot, it was like a ghost runner meant that there was nobody there. Yeah. So yeah. it's not really a ghost runner. There's someone there. Yeah, I thought someone referred to it as a zombie runner. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zombie runner instead of ghost runner. I'll accept yeah, that. Like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll accept that. All right. Uh, how about some Guardians news? Yeah, have- good news. Finally. Oh my Brian God! The Guardians actually did something. Brian Shaw is back. Woo. Signed him to a three million dollar deal with incentives up to nine million. That's a lot of money, and that takes them from the team that spent the 29th. Uh, most amount of money to the team that spent the 29th most amount of money because they oh still trail 28th by a million and a half dollars. Uh, yeah, they still have spent all that much money. Yeah, so we we got Brian Shaw. Have we done anything else? No, no. Uh, uh, we signed uh, that one catcher that got hurt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, Luke uh, Mail Mail or Miley or I don't know. Luke but, Mail. I think it's pronounced Mail. Um, Mail. I don't know. Um, yeah, either we way, signed, we went uh, spring training already. So, yeah, we signed Luke Mayo and Brian Shaw, and that's it. Yay, that's all they've done. Yeah, this is good. It's gonna be, be just like you said, James. Like, opening day, the place is gonna be packed, and then the next day, there's gonna be like 5,000 people at most. I 
have no idea if it's going to be packed because right now they're promoting buy opening day tickets, get other tickets for another game free right now. Okay. They're still struggling to sell opening day tickets. Oh my God. Well, and we're only t- about 20 days out here. Yeah. yeah. It's not that far out, but uh, their lack of spending uh, did not go unnoticed by players in baseball as Dallas Keuchel and Jock Peterson criticized them for their lack of spending in back-to-back days. Uh, Dallas Keuchel, obviously not a target for the guardians, but the guardians were interested in Jock Peterson and he signed elsewhere. Yep. It's, it's interesting, especially from Keuchel coming from like a division foe, you know, mm-hmm. for him, for him to say, I, I wish the guardians would spend more money. <laughs> like that, that one really was like, holy shit. You know, the, this is how bad the situation is in terms of Cleveland's ownership and how tight they are with their purse strings. At yeah. least we're not the Pittsburgh Pirates. They spent yeah. more money than the Guardians have this year. Only one team has spent less, and that's the A's, and they spent zero. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so worse than the Pirates for a year. Yeah, we're oh, yeah. They currently okay. have spent less money than the Pittsburgh Pirates. <laughs> that really does say something, then. Yeah, that speaks volumes to how little they are spending. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I- not a not a great. Uh, not a great uh, scenario there. Uh, question for you guys. Is Paul Dolan delusional? I think so. Uh, yes. Yes. Because he hopes CeCe Sabathia is going to enter the Hall of Fame as a Cleveland Indian? No way. He's going in as a Yankee. He's going as a Yankee. Like, That's a nine. I, I mean, he won World Series with the Yankees. Like, he, he, just... more games. he won more games. He had a better ERA and strikeout per nine ratio with the Yankees. Yeah. The, the best yeah I love the thought, out. but it's delusional. I, I love the thought. I would love to have him, you know, enter the Hall of Fame as a member of our team. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know where he, he got this idea in his head that he was – this was going to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think this was just something that Paul Dolan was throwing out there in hopes that DC would hear it and latch onto it and be like, oh, yeah, maybe. But no, I just don't. Best case scenario for for uh, Dolan and his his quest for this is that CC goes in without an insignia on the cap. That's the yeah. that's, that's the only way that he doesn't go in as a Yankee. I, I could see that. Yeah. I would I would love CC Sabathia Milwaukee Brewer Hall of Famer. That would be hilarious. But, <laughs> hilarious. but honestly, uh, the best case scenario, it would be no cap insignia. Yeah, he's not going to no. do that, though. He's going no, in. He's, he's going in as a Yankee. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of people in that Yankee organization, like, helped him turn his life around, too. Mm-hmm. Um, so he he has some really sentimental ties there that are a little deeper than the ones that he made in Cleveland. Uh, just speaking as someone who, you know, had problems with alcohol and is sober today myself, mm-hmm. um, he's six and a half years sober from alcohol now. Um, and I know that the Yankees played an integral part of helping assist him on his path to getting sober. Um, I don't know how much you remember about it, but I mean, like he elected to not participate in postseason baseball because he wanted to get help. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. uh, I, I think that That, too, just as someone who's in recovery and empathizing with that side of him a little bit, um, I think it would probably mean a lot to him to go in as a Yankee and have those people that helped him get sober be there and be a part of that. So that's how I anticipate it playing out. But Yeah, there's definitely the sobriety angle. There's definitely – he got in better shape with the Yankees. Yeah. Like, he was a a big guy. And I remember, like, the day that he signed, the headline at ESPN was – Will CC Sabathia be the player that has worn the most pinstripes ever? Like, really? That's the that's the headline you're going with most pinstripes? Like, what a giant middle finger! Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was yeah. so bad. He's obviously in a lot better shape now. Uh, he saw him, he got a some sort of award at some Cleveland thing the other day. Yeah, uh, he, he, got, he looks he, great now. Yeah, yeah he looks got an award at the Greater Cleveland Sports Award Show, whatever it's called. Yeah, so, you know, good for him. He's going to go in as a Yankee. Uh, yeah. Trick, I know you want to talk some Cavs, okay? And yeah. we've, been, we've been waiting, we been waiting, we been waiting. The Cavs have clinched a, at least a play-in spot. Okay. Yay! So, so if they lose every single game, we're still in there. They're going to have 
postseason basketball in Cleveland without LeBron James for the first time since 1997-1998. Incredible. Yes. I, unfortunately, without Taco Fall as well. Oh. We have got – we need to win Saturday's game against Chicago. It is a absolute must win. Luckily, even though we lost last night against Toronto, we're still ahead of them in the standings because we clinched the season series, so that's our tiebreaker. But, oh, my God, if we lose against Chicago, we're in trouble because that means we would be on a collision course with Brooklyn in the play-in tournament. I don't want to play Kyrie and Kevin Durant in a one, essentially a one and done type game. I'd much rather play him in a one and done than in a seven game series. Yeah. I'm with you there, actually. So I'm there's one way to look at it. You know, you could kind of make a, a positive of it that way that, like, at least they wouldn't have to face them later on. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, good teams, you got to beat the best to be the best. So, like, That's what this is with just. You. This just speaks to where we're kind of at, you know. It's like we know this team's not going to win a title. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. So I'm not I that. Really, yeah, I, I I agree. Like it's it's important, but like I don't I don't think that this season can really be a failure in any sense. Now that we've clinched a spot in the playing tournament, for me it would be just because we where we've been throughout the standings and how the expectations have changed as the season has progressed. So. Being but whose expectations have changed, though? Because mine haven't. Well, like before the season, nobody predicted us to be in the in the playoff picture, let alone the play play in tournament. Right, so, I'll give you that. But it's never been like we were going to be winners of the Eastern Conference. Oh, and I that I understand. I trust me, I get that. Nobody was picking us to win the finals or get to the Eastern Conference finals. That's even all I know, you know. Is that yeah. Even as a diehard Cavaliers fan, I'm I'm not going to be crazy enough to say, yep, we're going to the Eastern Conference Finals. Like, no. Like, I know Brooklyn's better than us. I know Philadelphia is better than us. Milwaukee, Boston, Miami. I get it. I get it. We're in the bottom half of the top half of the Eastern Conference. I'll say it like that. That... The bottom of the first quarter. Yes, <laughs> I'm all over the I place today. For you, I'm all over the place today. Give me a break, God damn it! No, you're good. No, I, I just think that like it that at this point, I feel like we're playing with house money. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah, it it would be huge if they win this game. Uh, but I, I, I could, you know, if they lose this game, it's, eh, you know, how much does it really change things in the grand scheme? You know what I'm saying? Like for me, it changes a lot. Yeah. Well, what's uh, the difference if we get knocked out in the first round of the playoffs or the second? I mean, I'm not picking us to go to the, to win a first round series. I'll, I'll admit that, but here's the thing with the play in tournament. I mean, I get it. Like, if you lose the 7-8 game, you go into the the secondary game where you play the winner of the 9-10 matchup. I get that. But I, essentially, it's a one-and-done type tournament at its core. Whereas, so let's say in that scenario, Darius Garland has a bad night shooting or, like, Evan Mobley is off, we may, we probably lose that game. Whereas if you get into a seven game series, you still have at least at least three more games to try and get right and get back into the series. Yeah, but you just said that they're not gonna win a for they're not gonna win a series anyway. So it's like what difference does it make if they lose in the play in tournament in the first game or if they lose in the first series? You know what I mean? Like if they're gonna lose either way, it's like how much of a difference is it? getting knocked out in the play-in tournament versus getting knocked out in the first round of the postseason. I think it makes a huge difference, actually. Okay. I, I don't, uh, number one. Uh, number two, I'm not really all that stressed about this Bulls game uh, on Saturday because I don't expect the Cavs to win that game, to be honest. Uh, the Bulls are the better team. Uh, but just hope Toronto loses to the Pacers as well. Yeah. That night. Uh 
I will say this: we're playing the Bulls at the right time. They're on a, a bit of a skid right now. I think they what, just lost to New Orleans. Three out of their last ten, I want to say they've only won three out of their last ten games. Something, something like, like that. that. So but, yeah, we're getting them at the right time. You know, we're finding them in a, in a moment when they're kind of vulnerable. I'm so, pretty yeah, sure it's I'm the Rosen Yeah, it's gonna be a good game. I'm excited for it. I'm just not as like if this game doesn't end up good for us, like, oh, the season's over. I, it, it yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm going a little extreme on it, but that's just how I'm viewing it based on, again. You're setting yourself up for a lot of disappointment is all I'm saying. If you're going to put all that pressure on one game. Yeah. Well, uh, DeMar like Rosen's it. listed as, as day-to-day. Lonzo Ball is out. There we go. So, all right. Some, some things. Positive for the Cavs. I'm going to worry about them because they have their own injury issues as well. You know, yeah. Dean Wade uh, out for the season pretty much. Jared Allen also has that same designation. Um, Still haven't really got much from Chris LeVert, you know, because of his injuries. So, yeah, it's uh, – Why did we put Kevin Love in the starting lineup last, last game? Matchup. Matchup reason, matchup. yeah. That was bizarre. They, they, they wanted that for the matchup. That's all it was. was. Uh, it's it's matching up with, with Toronto's starting lineup. Yeah. He still played the same amount of minutes that he typically plays. It, it was just, you know, I mean, it doesn't really matter who starts versus who doesn't in, in a role like Kevin Love. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. I get – in the grand scheme of things, I do understand what you're saying, Brian, and maybe I'm looking – reading into the situation a little too much. I'll admit that. I – I tend to do that sometimes, but. Yeah, you're very all or nothing. Yeah. And for this particular situation, I am. Yes. Yeah. I'll say this. If we win this game against the Bulls, then that gives us some very good momentum and something to be excited about heading into the postseason. I I just think that, like, my expectations aren't too high for this team. You know what I mean anyway? So it's like. Uh, yeah. I'm just enjoying the ride, you know? Oh, I am too. Trust me. But I feel like my, I'm, maybe I am playing too much into it. Uh, yeah, I think you are. Uh, there, there are definitely some winnable games down the stretch here. We still play Orlando twice. Okay. Orlando yeah. sucks. Okay. <laughs> you yeah, know, we're going to be playing the, the Bucks in the last game of the season where they're probably going to be resting everybody. Okay. Yeah. It's an easy win. You know, same thing for Brooklyn. Second to last game of the season, we play Brooklyn. Ooh, you know what nice. they're not going to be doing? Playing Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving heavy minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the end of the season kind of sets up nicely for us in that way. Yeah, we're, we're still playing meaningful games in terms of like battling for position and whatnot. We have way more to play for in those games than they do. So that'll that'll make a big impact. Those will be interesting games. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I'm not going to, like, fret over, like, one game. There's still too many games to sit here and, like, panic and fret over them, honestly. Uh, when we get to the five or less, that's that's when it's probably the, the good time to, to focus in on positioning. And are, are you worried about play-in tournament versus actual playoffs? Uh, mm. That's that's really the time to do it. We'll start at the next game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. That's what I would do. That's how I would go about it if I'm, if I'm worried about anything. Start with the next game. Mm-hmm. Turk, how about you? What do you feel about this Cavs team? What do you think they? How do you think the season ends for them? Where at? I mean, I I pers- I'm gonna guess uh, forty between the forty four to forty seven wins. I mean, like in postseason, you think oh, they have any season success? I think they. I think their uh, success is just going to the second round, just a second round of exit. That's their potential. If they cool. go farther, yeah, that's, that's where I got them. I, I I think that's their ceiling. I think a first round. Victory would be their ceiling, but um. Oh yeah. right. Yeah, I, and I think that is possible. If they go past that, then then I might be then championship might enter my head. <laughs> of course. It depends. I will on- go to that point if they are making the conference finals because that that proves that this is a team not to mess with. I mean, having Toronto and Milwaukee win recent championships, you know, it does give teams like the Caps a little bit more hope than they've had in recent years. You know what I mean? Like where it was like. It was a will, foregone conclusion who was going to win the title in the recent, you know, I, some of those seasons. I, will I mean, say with though, Toronto, the only reason they won that title is because they got Kawhi. 
Otherwise, they wouldn't have been in that position. Yeah. yeah. So it's one of the teams that, you know, weren't necessarily favorites at the beginning of the year can prove right. in the postseason. Right. I know. I I got what your overall point was. Word. Yes. Yeah. Well, right. it appears that we've ran into a little bit of a brick wall here. Do we want to get to some tournament talk before we wrap things up? Yeah, let's talk about the tournament, uh, NCAA tournament. Been a lot of fun. Been a lot of fun to watch. Um, Good ride for us Buckeye fans and Wolverine fans, but it has come to a conclusion. Yes. And I will team run now run. has one team remaining. Both teams went farther than I thought that they would. Um, I didn't think either team would win in round one. Uh, Same. And they both did. Michigan won a second time, but they lost yesterday, which I kind of expected, to be yeah. honest. Um, but that, uh, that scumbag, Coach K, won last night. Yeah, we were kind of excited thinking it might have been the last time that we had to deal with him being on the court. But one more go round uh, for Coach K and the boys down there in uh, North Carolina. It would have yeah. just been so perfect if his career would have ended stuck on 99 tournament wins. It would have been so it would have been so just it would have been thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. But he got to 100. Great coach. I mean – Duke wasn't really much of anything before him. Yeah. You know? No. So it's uh it just goes to show how like a a transcendent coach can take a, a program and just take them to new heights, you know. And yep. that's something that as a Michigan basketball fan that we are hoping for. But yep. a lot of questionable coaching moves by Juwan Howard. Uh so yeah, that's uh remains to be seen. The guy can recruit his absolute nuts off, but uh, his in-game decision-making has been questionable at best. And, uh, yeah, so that remains to be seen for us. But good year overall for Ohio State and for Michigan. Both exceeded expectations uh, as far as their tournament success went. Yep. I have to take a ball again because I said Arizona was going to win the tournament, win it all, and Houston said, um, no. No. Houston's got a good team. Yeah. They've knocked off some big teams, so. Yeah, they go against yeah. Villanova in the next round. That's going to be a good one. Yeah. Houston, thing has, is Houston's going in as the lower-seeded team, but they are currently favorite by two points. Really? Yes. That, wow. one in, uh, that opened up as Houston being one-point favorites. It's now grown to two. So. That's surprising to me. Houston's going to have to play their best game because Villanova is not going to beat themselves. They're not just going to carelessly turn the ball over. You know, with a Jay Wright coach team, they're going to play the full 40 minutes of just good, solid, bat, good, solid, fundamental basketball. You're going to have to bring your best game if you want to beat the Wildcats. Simple as that. Let's talk about the games this evening. Uh, does the St. Peter's upset yeah. Purdue? Does their nope. Cinderella run continue? Nope. Uh, I think there's a real chance here, but that's as far as I'll go. I'm saying – Big Ten was yes. grossly overrated all year long, mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's been exposed with – I mean, we had nine teams in the tournament, and we're down to one already. So It's, it's just Purdue. Yeah. And it's just Purdue. And Purdue is always a team that, I mean, they're much like a Wisconsin. You know, they, they get excited and they have the player and they're going to go the, the whole way this year. And then it ends in disappointment. And so, yeah, I think that in terms of a, a 15 seeds chances to, to make it beyond this round, they have as good as any team ever has. I do like how St. Peter's plays. They're just like, yeah, we don't care. We're house money attitude. I'm telling you, when you got a team, that's why Michigan, I think, uh, oh, ex exceeded expectations is they were playing with house money. They were an 11 seed. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people argued they should have been in the NIT. Same thing with North Carolina. That's why I think UNC, I, kind of getting ahead of myself, I think they win that uh, bracket. I think they come out of the East. I would love it if we got, I know you guys don't love Coach K, but I would personally love it. If we got UNC Duke in the final four, I would be 
all over that match. Well, to see Coach K lose one more time to North Carolina and it'd be it in the final game would would be would be awesome to see. But fuck Coach K and fuck Duke. So yeah, yeah I'm so tired of them. I'm so yeah. tired of them. And I'm so tired of uh, Buckeye fans that are Duke basketball fans too. By the way. Buckeye fans, I don't have problems with you guys for being Buckeye fans, but I got problems with you being Duke basketball fans just because they don't win a fucking national title every goddamn year in basketball like they do in football. So grow up, people. If you're going to root for a school, root for them on, in every sport is what I'm saying. Are you, Growing so up, you I was a UConn like, fan. I didn't like Duke. So, Brian, you don't like it when – like somebody roots for one uh, college football team, but roots for a different college basketball team. You don't like that. Correct. If you're rooting for college teams, root for college teams. Exactly. Are you're you a fan for- or are you not? Like, doesn't make much sense to me. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Don't don't be the Alabama football, Duke basketball, Yankee warrior. Those people uh, all are just admitting like, okay, I'm a front running bandwagoner <laughs> and I'm okay with it. I'm embracing that title and I'm running with it. That's what those people are. Those yeah, people, people that are, people I'm not are, an Ohio State basketball fan because they're not that good. So it's like, well, why would I care? And it's like, well, I don't get it. Those people are Drake. They're Drake. That's all it is. Boom. You're all Drakes. Okay. <laughs> and that is how we are going to wrap up this episode of So What's the Catch. Thank you for tuning in. We should be back at our normal time next week. Closing right. thoughts. Who's got something? James, you had something on the tip of your tongue. Uh, yeah. Uh, who has their uh, their their uh, NCAA winner still intact? We do. Kansas. Hey, Kansas. guys. Chirk, who did you pick? I forgot who you picked. You picked Ohio State again. Oh, you picked Ohio State to win the whole damn thing, didn't you? That's right. All right. Well, yeah. I, I... What? Who was your pick? Arizona. Arizona. Okay. Can I take a mall again? No. Damn I'll it. let you pick again because I'm that confident that you'll pick wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Despite your new team, who are you riding with now? Villanova. Nova? All right. We'll see. Uh, who's Villanova play next? Houston. Houston. Yeah, Houston's the two-point favorites as the five seed. Interesting. Yep, I'm going with Nova. Cool. Going with well, Nova. So I'm going to be rooting big time for Houston later. <laughs> <laughs> Right there, James. Right there. I'm going to be sitting there proud of the table for Houston. I don't even know what the mascot of their school is, but let's the go. The Cougars. 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 Thank you. Go Cougs. So, yeah, I'm going to be rooting right for there, Houston. Right there, James. Right there. We're rooting for Houston. I'm rooting for St. Peter's to take down Purdue because I think Purdue are frauds. Uh, I agree. I, I, I And I think I'm always rooting for a 15 seed. I mean, come on. You know, that's yeah, a great and I don't care enough about Iowa State, Miami to watch. Terrible. Both are bad teams. That's why uh, part of the reason I love Kansas going to the Final Four is that's uh, yeah, that's that's the the team that gets the privilege to lose to Kansas after Kansas takes care of business against Providence tonight. Oh yeah, Kansas is going to take care of Providence, no problem. But I will not be able to watch any of the games tonight because I will be at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse for Charlotte Checkers versus Cleveland Monsters. The Charlotte Checkers are a team. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. And cool. yet their mascot is a polar bear. Makes total sense because yep. polar bears are famously known for playing checkers. Don't yeah. let chess. <laughs> Not good chess players, but they can you know, jump well, with, the, people with the best of them. Well, with their paws, they can't grip the pieces with chess. They That's can only the push problem. the checkers. There's no opposing <laughs> them. Wait, Brian, here's the even weirder part. They're in Charlotte, yet they're not affiliated with the Carolina Hurricanes. Oh, it happens all the time with, with minor league affiliates, Josh. Come on. Yeah. They're, they used to be affiliated with the Carolina Hurricanes, but now they're affiliated with the Florida Panthers. Well, look, I mean, come on. The, the Monsters here in town used to be an Avalanche affiliate, okay? Yeah. That's, because, so. that's actually because the Monsters moved here from Utah. I know, but still, they were in Utah with Colorado. So, so they were already out of state. <laughs> they were already out of state. Yeah. So, you know, that's just how minor leagues go. I mean – who remembers when uh, the AAA affiliate in Cleveland for uh, uh, baseball was the Buffalo Bisons? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I Hey, we also – do you remember the Cleveland Barons, that logo, that the shark that had the monocular? The monocle, yeah. yeah. Monocle? 
Yes. Wow, your words, man. You just make up words. It's so good. Monoculars. He had monoculars on. I'm, speak, I'm bringing Josh and these into so what's the catch. Damn it. All right. Right. Now I think we're going to wrap up. So. Yeah, I think with that, that's a good time to wrap up when you're just inventing words on the spot. Um, <laughs> Wait, thanks for I gotta... joining us on Friday, guys. Yeah, we got to make sure we say that. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in on a Friday. We will be back to our regular scheduled time. I, I got a berserker this week. Oh, right. berserker. Give All, me right. All right, drum roll. No, you don't get one. The, the berserker, I will put in uh, Darius Scarlet. Okay, I'm right. so glad that it wasn't who I thought it was going to be. Same. I, I thought, thought the Berserker be of the Week was going to be a different player in Cleveland. Baker? Thank you. Not me. No, 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 not Baker. Not Baker. But we'll, we'll anyway, leave it thanks, guys. It's been real fun. We will see you next Wednesday at our normal scheduled time. With more shenanigans. Mm-hmm.